Hi, and welcome to All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. It is Thursday, the 24th of May. My name is Julia Caserta. I use they, them pronouns. I'm Oliver Caldwell. I use they, he, he pronouns. And we would like to preface this episode with a trigger warning. Yeah, we're putting a trigger warning on this episode because we're going to be discussing sensitive topics such as suicide and possibly self-harm. Okay. Let's get into that. Yes. Spicy topic. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we're going to start off by talking with the... the... <laughs> the leading causes of uh, suicide in the LGBTQ plus community. And one of the biggest ones I think we should talk about first is not having family support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, family support is essential in any situation for kids because uh, it's very important for uh, your home to be a safe space where you mm -hmm. can express yourself and feel um, comforted and like you're surrounded by people who care about you and support you. So it's um, very harmful and stressful for kids to have families that don't support them or aren't there for them or don't realize what's going on. Mm -hmm. And LGBTQ plus youth who have experienced family rejection are around eight times more likely to have reported uh, a suicide attempt, mm -hmm. which is a horrible truth, but not having family support can do uh, a lot of damage on your mental health. Yeah, so this is a good time to say that if you are a parent watching this, to make sure that you're always checking in with your kids and supporting them, and regardless of what you know or what you're educated about or what you understand about your kid, it's still very important to support them mm -hmm. in all um, areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the <laughs> sad leading causes of this. And another one of the leading causes that I think would be good to discuss is internalized homophobia, which can yeah. also lead, to, which can also we can also lead into self hate as well. Yes, internalized homophobia and transphobia are. Um, that's a pretty big and complicated um, topic to discuss, but essentially internalized homophobia means when you are like maybe unaware of it or maybe par partially aware of it, but you're homophobic or transphobic and um, that can sort of like leak into your definition of yourself, I guess. So if you realize you're LGBTQ and you are, you have some like internalized homophobia from being around people who are homophobic or hearing ideas that um, are offensive, then you can sort of develop false ideas about yourself that you might not mm -hmm. even know you have, but it leads to a lot of mm -hmm. um, self-doubt and self-hate and that yeah. kind of thing. I think not even just in the LGBTQ plus yeah. community, I think the biggest cause of suicide is self-hate and feelings of worthlessness, mm -hmm. which are obviously horrible feelings and no one in this world is worthless. Mm -hmm. But internalized homophobia is one of the biggest things because imagine like, imagine if you hated this huge part of yourself, it would, mm -hmm. you couldn't, you almost wouldn't be able to function. Yeah, yeah, it's a very, um depressing thing that homophobia and transphobia are so present in society that they you can drive get people into, to yeah. take their own life. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, just self-hatred and self-doubt in general is an um, issue. I think what we've talked about before is that a lot of the time people think of like mental health issues and depression and suicide and self-harm coming from the outside, um, mm -hmm. from external forces, but that um, a lot of the time it's, it really just comes down to yourself and how you react to things and it's not your fault if you have a, like a mental health issue or anything like that, but mm -hmm. it's very much um, from the inside. So you can be in um, a terrible setting and react to it well, or you can be in like what people would consider an ideal household or an ideal setting and you can still be um, depressed or suicidal. Yeah, it really does not matter what's going on in your mm -hmm. life or how people view you. It's really just how you view you. Like people, your family could be the most supportive and people could mm -hmm. adore you and love you. But if even with that, that doesn't really matter in the scheme of things because as long as you hate yourself and feel those yeah. awful feelings, then no matter, no, 
no amount of pep talks will make you feel better. Yeah, that's important to recognize, but at the same time, um, that means that if you're struggling with all those internal things, it's very important to have positive external forces because um, like, it's not going to make it worse if you have a supportive family, of course, and it probably is going to make things worse if you have um, like a bad surrounding or you're being bullied or your family isn't there for you. So it's important to have good surroundings, but also to recognize that um, when it comes down to it, it's internal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do hear a lot about these like stories of kids who were bullied to committing suicide, but there are also kids that you don't really hear much about who weren't bullied. They didn't yeah. have anything going on yet they were still, they were one of the unlucky few who were just touched by that yeah. mental illness. And I think mental illness could be something that we could really go in depth in the mm -hmm. show, especially yeah. because of how prevalent it is in this community. Because bullying w could most definitely make it more, more, you more likely, and bullying is very common in this community, especially being an LGBTQ plus youth. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, mental health is something we're going to be talking about quite a bit. Um, in a sort of series of episodes covering different topics within that realm. Mm -hmm. So this is a good one to start out with because this is a very prevalent issue. And especially with um, bullying that we're talking about, uh, LGBTQ plus youths are a lot more likely to not go to school because of safety concerns mm -hmm. because, and because they're being bullied and because they're afraid of something might bad ha something bad might happen to them. Mm -hmm. And that could also eventually in the long term lead to this kind of like self-hatred and suicide. Yeah, yeah. another thing um, that's really unfortunate about that is that if you're not going to school regularly enough, you're first of all not getting your education, which sucks, but also- which you were paying for, yeah, not getting it. Yeah, which also you might um, be like socially isolating yourself because if you're forced to stay home or you feel you can't go to school because you're unsafe, then you're also not spending time with your friends and not like making those connections and developing good relationships with people at school, which is mm -hmm. something that's essential. And not going to school also doesn't have to be like a kind of safety thing. Mm -hmm. I have myself have taken days off from school because I couldn't handle being around mm -hmm. other people. I was so anxious and uncomfortable. I just had to get out of there. Yeah. And again, that's, that's not an external thing. It's mm -hmm. internal yet people will ask me, like, are you being bullied? Do you feel unsafe? And I'll answer, no, no, no. But they assume that I must be, just yeah. because, like, because I needed to take a day. Yeah, people assume that um, it's a, always like a physical safety reason, but sometimes it can be more like emotional safety or just like um, not being able to handle whatever happens at school. And I think we're going to cover in a future episode, we're going to go more um, in depth about like mental health days and why they're important and mm -hmm. tips for how to do that. I would also talk about the fact that although suicide is a lot more common in the LGBTQ plus community, suicide is the tenth leading tenth leading cause of death for all ages in the in America. Mm -hmm. It's very it's a very almost common kind of thing. Yeah, in not just in this community, it's everywhere. The fact that it is everywhere is just kind of almost disgusting, the fact that people mm -hmm. feel like it's necessary to take their own life. Yeah, um, I think it's that's why it's just essential to have like support systems and recognize that teens and kids and people of all ages can have and do have mental health problems and mm -hmm. um, struggle with things. And I think probably a lot of um, communities tend to tell kids and just society in general tells kids that they're like too young and we've talked about that kind of thing um, like in past stories, episodes. Yeah. yeah, but that goes for mental health too because a lot of adults think kids are like too young to know what's going on in their heads. But People also tend to shy away from talking about suicide mm -hmm. and mental health. Like media is becoming slightly better mm -hmm. with shows but not very good ones. Yeah, I think, and people tend to just think it's like a taboo kind of thing to talk about, and mm -hmm. that's almost kind of the exact opposite. Because if you talked about it more, people wouldn't feel so isolated when they do have these thoughts. Because yeah, having thoughts like this are kind of—it's almost normal. Yeah, it's not it's like definitely it doesn't normalized. make you weird in a sense. It just—it's—it's it's just people don't get that it 
everyone has these kinds of things because it's not normalized and it's not like it's not shown in media. Right, yeah, but on the flip side of that, there's also yeah. very problematic shows like 13 Reasons Why, for instance. I could go the, on for yeah. hours about that yeah. lovely show. Yeah, the second season, I think, just came out, and mm -hmm. a lot of people are watching it and oblivious to the fact that it's really um, sort of romanticizing suicide. It turns it into and, a revenge plot. Yes, and I think I've, I've talked to my own friends about I have friends who watch that show, and I've talked to them and told them, like, you can't support this because it's glorifying these terrible things, and it also shows a bunch of very problematic stuff on screen, mm. which is, like, not okay at all because kids can get access to the show just through, like, Netflix and watch it. So, we talk, sorry, I interrupted you, but you talk about the problematic things that's showed on screen. Mm -hmm. um, it's been, they had people on the show explaining to them Mm -hmm. Like they had professionals, and they some of them specific, specifically said, "Do not show the suicide on screen." Yeah. Because it leads to more people. Yeah. They see it, and they want to almost. It's like a copycat effect. It's yeah. an actual thing. Where like if you where if you see someone else doing this, you kind of get the okay to do it. Yeah. And it happens just it's like it's a psychological thing. Like if you see someone crossing the street without a light on, you'll follow because you get yeah. the okay. And then it, that can be applied to these bigger things where mm -hmm. you see this girl who did these tapes and she hurt herself mm -hmm. and you and other people have been now think oh that's a that's a good way to do it I'm gonna yeah. write out all these tapes and I'm gonna turn it into a revenge plot mm -hmm. yeah I think um, you can almost think of it kind of like product placement in um, like TV shows and in movies uh, where companies will like put in their products in the movie and then people will see it and Maybe not um, consciously, but they'll like but be more aware of it. You walk down the store aisle and you recognize that product. From yeah, the exactly. So it's the same sort of thing in this show. If they're showing things like suicide and self harm uh, on screen, then kids are like maybe they'll watch it and be like revolted by it. But maybe later they'll think about it and think like that that's a thing that kids do and they'll be more aware of it and they'll subconsciously be like internalizing all these bad thoughts and I think that's something people don't understand because I've heard people say like um, 13 Reasons Why is good because it's talking about important heavy topics but um, it's and important do, to bring I do these... think we need those yeah, kind of shows yeah. and topics to be brought up but not, not in, in that way. better sense. Yeah, they also they put a few warnings on two of the episodes, two of the episodes that visibly showed a rape. Yeah, which I watched. I watched the show out of pure curiosity because I wanted to see what all the fuss was about, mm -hmm. and I understood what all the fuss was about after I watched those two episodes. Yeah, I was, I did not want to see that even with the warning. Yeah, it was not enough. It shouldn't have been shown in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's just ridiculous that they think that people are like. Um, justifying showing things like that on screen and even making the show in the first place by because saying they that, a warning. that they're um, yeah that they're putting warnings or bringing up important topics and it's important to bring up these topics but not like that you have to bring it up with like just facts and making sure to talk about the fact that it's not okay because kids are just seeing the show out of context and maybe there's a few warnings but it's not it's presented to them in a way that seems like like this is a normal show about normal teens who it do also, things like this. I also got the whole school talking about mm -hmm. the girl who committed suicide, Hannah Baker. Yeah. Got the whole school talking about it, and it was this huge thing. And, was, and that could be a message to kids, like, oh, if you want to get noticed, do this. Yeah, yeah. And also, if we're going to nitpick the show, it wasn't good character. They weren't any good characters either. Their motivations made no sense. It was just a very yeah, bad I mean, show. I watched the whole thing. It's both like unrealistic and also just on a, a little base level, not a good show. Yeah. So there's honestly no reason to watch it. So if you're thinking about watching it, don't. And if you're already watching it, please stop because yeah. you shouldn't be like promoting. Oh, like shading me right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but you shouldn't be um, like supporting a show like that or anything that glorifies. Um, suicide, but that's important to bring up. I know, and what bugs me the most is that people are talk, calling it like bold and new, and that it's like that they're doing it's just like this new amazing thing that they're showing. And I'm like, first off, suicide is not new. Yeah, it's not a new thing. And also, it maybe it's bold, but it's bold in a bad way. Yeah, it's like they're getting a little too 
bold, a little yeah. too confident. Like, yeah, suicide is bring it back a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, suicide isn't it's also you not know, a marketing trendy and, ploy. Yeah, exactly. it's not a marketing ploy. You can't show, you can't use this to get a new like uh, to get an audience. That's mm -hmm. not okay. Yeah, it's, and that's honestly probably where most of their views come from is people who um, hear about the show and then think like what's all the fuss about? Like you were talking about, and then watch it, and you're supporting it, and so they're basically using it as I'm just like a way to. I'm not. I was curious. I'm not, I'm not throwing shade on you. I'm you just are throwing, throwing shade on me. You're throwing much shade. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heavy topics. True. I'm trying to make light of it with a few jokes. Yes. But yeah, I think it's just pretty much summary of that show. Don't watch it. And suicide isn't trendy and cool and a good idea or a good like way to get attention. Just, yeah. it's not. And I don't want to linger okay. on this too long, but I got more to say. <laughs> they turned it into a revenge plot. Also, they never even touched on mental illness. Exactly. She didn't have a mental illness, or if she did, it wasn't diagnosed, and it definitely wasn't discussed. It so wasn't. if they had maybe, maybe, if they had put that in and made it like a mental, a, like mental illness awareness thing, and they obviously didn't show those horrible things. It, may, it yeah. had so much potential to be such a good show. Yeah, it really I think, did. I really think it had potential. But I think regardless, it could have been harmful, like either mm -hmm. way, because um, even just like that's the risky thing about talking about this kind of this thing. This could be harmful. Is, We're yeah, about it now. if you if you bring it up, it's good to raise awareness, but it's also um, like you do that with the risk of giving people mm -hmm. like ideas. Yeah, so moving on from this, I would love to bring up what kids love to say nowadays, go kill yourself. Yeah. Kids love to say that. I've been told it many a time, mm -hmm. and I would love to hear your thoughts on making yeah. it into a joke. Yeah, I think um, it's really <coughs> awful that kids make jokes about all sorts of things and think that just because like, oh, I was just joking, that it's okay because even if you're bringing it up in like a humorous way, it doesn't make it any more okay. And um, whether you're talking about yourself or someone else, it's like that's not in any way, there's no reason you should ever say something like that. Um, and, yeah, I like, hear maybe if you are actually contemplating mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, then yes, talk to someone about yeah. it, that's totally okay. No, that's okay. different. It's much different from saying like, for oh, making I a joke have this hard test, I want to kill myself. Yeah. Or, oh, you annoyed me, go kill yourself. Or, oh, I like to have my room, I like to organize markers, I must be OCD. Yeah. Or something like that. I or, oh, my that... mood changes, I must be bipolar. Yeah, I hear that kind of thing. There's jokes about all sorts of stuff going around all the time and... Especially um, depression, that's a very prevalent one that I yeah. hear a lot. Yeah, people use the word depressed as a very everyday kind of emotion describing word, I guess, whereas it isn't. Originally, that was kind of what it was. Yeah. That. The word does technically mean sad, yeah. but now it's kind of coming into this more, that language mm -hmm. changes, as we said, it's coming into this more, it's a mental illness, and now they're yeah. kind of like, it's not. Yeah, okay. people use it as just kind of like, like, oh, I have depression, I'm so like, like they'll they'll walk into like their least favorite class and be like oh I'm so depressed this this like gives me depression or this gives me anxiety or something and I've heard people yeah. like there are people who like hate they like oh I hate small talk I'm so socially anxious mm -hmm. and like maybe you're anxious maybe you're awkward but you don't have social anxiety like you don't have yeah. social phobia yeah maybe you do I don't know but from the people who I've heard say that who I know for a fact don't it drives me up the yeah. wall yeah and it's also like it's hard to um, sort of decipher who's serious and who's not, and that makes things so much harder um, trying to find like your friend's help, because if half of my friends say, like, oh, I'm gonna kill myself as a joke, and the other half says that, and they're like serious, <coughs> and they're um, you might... like bringing it up in a way that, um, like the only way they can through humor, then I can't decipher which is which, and I don't know who's safe and who's not, and when people are serious and say it, sometimes I'll like, people say something like, oh, I'm so OCD, or like, my OCD's acting up, and I'll be like, hey, you can't say that because like, this is a real thing that happens, and I'll be like, no, I actually have this. So it's or so difficult to my, figure out what's real. One of my biggest fears is that someone will uh, talk about wanting to kill himself in a humorous manner, because mm -hmm. I use humor as a kind of a way to talk yeah, about a lot of people the time, do. and I, I'll laugh. 
and yeah. that's my biggest fear is that I'll laugh and I'll make them yeah. feel worse. And I just I mm. yeah, that's... I wish that it was something that was some that people just stopped joking about it. I wish that so much. Mm-hmm. You also find this in the like, community. People joke about like I think we talked about this before the word gay being used as like a joking kind of insult. Oh and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, they that it's happens so a lot with these words that should not be mm-hmm. turned into that. Yeah, and I mean, there's some kids who use the word gay as an insult, um, but they also, like, they're not, they don't think of themselves as homophobic, and they don't think they're being homophobic by using gay as an insult, because then if you ask them about it, they'll say, oh, yeah, I'm fine with gay people, but, like, you're going around and calling your friends, like, gay because they told you how they're feeling, and, like, oh, no, if you're male, you can't say how you're feeling because that's gay. That can also like, be a cause of suicide. Too. Yeah, exactly. Males Toxic are, masculinity yeah, is Yeah, the stereotypes sucky. and feeling like you have to fit into them, which is a good segue into that topic, actually. Oh, yes, Thank you definitely. all. <laughs> um, stereotypes and feeling like you're forced to fit into them, but then not actually fitting into them. Mm-hmm. That can lead you to think, think, like, oh, you don't fit in. Oh, you aren't right. You don't yeah. fit into this. So, like social norm that was mm-hmm. created for you or there just is no social norm for you because like you're just outside of any box and incapable of fitting in like I feel like a lot of non-binary people um, are both like exempt from having to feel like they have to fit into male and female but also feeling like like now there's no place for us like what do we do like we don't have to but necessarily on binary stereotype is a right oh, yeah, which yeah like a definitely a short haircut that's kind of like long on the top you know what i'm talking about uh, hey. not yours <laughs> not yours like the sloppy one you know and these yes. stere- <laughs> <laughs> these stereotypes are like not, and now that's like we kind of you kind of it's kind of like you don't want to fit in into any of these stereotypes mm-hmm. but now these stereotypes were made for these people who don't want to fit into these stereotypes yeah. So like this constant endless cycle and then that can lead to not fitting not feeling like you fit in, not feeling mm-hmm. like you have friends, isolation, and isolation can lead to worthless feelings and then Yeah. Yeah. You just, get somewhere that's not so good. <laughs> yeah. Um I think toxic masculinity is also a huge problem because um it's just like men and masculine people are made to feel as if they can't express their emotions, they can't be feminine, they can't um like be decent human beings because that's gay or you're not like a manly man if you like they can't hug their guy friend. yeah like, like what like if you hug someone suddenly everyone's talking about how you're gay and it's like okay like you can't do that because if a girl hugs another girl nobody's gonna call her gay must be like oh how cute yeah well, they must be exactly so close friends yeah so that's a huge problem and I think that leads a lot of um boys and men and masculine people to feel like they can't talk about um, important topics and important feelings with other people, with their families, because there's a risk that, like, whoever you talk to will just tell you to, like, man up or whatever, which is just so I've harmful. I've been told to man up. <laughs> what? Yeah. I can't, te- I can't, what? Yeah, that's a, it's just ridiculous that um, people are made to feel that way, because that just leads to, like, stuffing all your feelings up and not being able to share there things that you so need to many, talk about. There are so many things that could potentially lead to suicide and the fact yeah. that it's like the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. Mm-hmm. is so, so d- depressing, kind it's of terrible. revolting in a sense. Like, yeah. have to, like, it's just the fact that people feel that people feel the need and that they feel like they can't get help or that yeah. other people drive other people to do that. Yeah, or just that it's so... Um, like joked about and normalized in a bad way in our society that um, it's presented as an option, so people think that it's like okay to do it. And then like even like getting going to therapy for it gets a bad mm-hmm. reputation because like oh it's yeah. only for like crazies and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, a lot of people think of like oh if you have to see a therapist like oh boy you must be like not so great in the head, which is just awful because like you can go to therapy no matter what your mental situation is. Like, I know people who go to therapy who, like, don't have a diagnosed mental illness or just, like, have what a lot of people would call, like, a perfect life and, 
maybe like if even if you're completely mentally stable and fine, it's still good for people to be able to talk about stuff in like a professional Especially setting. Especially because they feel like they can't talk about their emotions exactly around, around other people. Who aren't yeah, professionals. So and then, but since they can't do that, and now therapists getting this like bad rep, they can't really. It just leads to yeah. you crying in your closet a lot. Yeah. What do you like? What are you supposed to do when society is telling you not to talk about your feelings with your friends, but also not to go to a therapist because then you're crazy? Like when you you, you're not presented with any option but to just sort of wallow in your own emotions, which is not healthy at all. Which is why um, people should be encouraging other people to like get help and be able to talk to people and create safe spaces for people to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Heavy so topic, yeah. you know. <laughs> that there are so many causes and that's so so many things could lead to such horrible actions. Yeah. And it just Yeah, I think I, that it's just um important to remember that um like it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to talk about this stuff and it's important it's okay to find to people. feel whatever you are feeling. Yeah. And no to matter find, what it is, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, to find people who will um like support you and um even if they don't necessarily understand what's going on, just like find people who um are like understanding or sympathize or comfort you, all that. Whether it be family or friends. Yeah. It can be anyone, like as long as they're um, kind therapist. to you and they understand exactly therapy's but, a good yeah. outlet it really is like <laughs> I go to it and it's fantastic yeah I'm able to you know talk and actually there's like this person actually like has prior knowledge to this they're not right. just some friend I'm ranting to and then loading all yeah. my feelings on yeah exactly and um yeah so it's good to try to find resources wherever you are and there's a lot of good um like if you talk to your school social worker or guidance counselor about oh, like, like if you say hotline is also yeah, available. Yeah, hotlines mm -hmm. and um, there's always like financial help for a lot of therapists. So if you feel like, well, I can't pay to go to therapy, like you probably can if you can find the right um, source of financial help. You can find and the that right kind of like great program. There's yeah. must be. There's resources everywhere if you look hard enough and it's sad that you aren't just presented with them but um mm -hmm. yeah it's important to find those and create your own and find people to talk to the trevor before we wrap this up yes. let's pause yeah we need to we need to talk a little bit more about hotlines there is a suicide <laughs> hotline and there's also the trevor project which i believe is an lgbtq plus yeah. based one yeah it's six which is two is it, which is helpful especially because of how high it is in this community and mm -hmm. how common it is to self-harm or to attempt mm -hmm. to take one's life or to actually succeed in taking one's life. Yeah. Do we have the numbers for those? Do we have the numbers? Because that would be those? kind of essential. I think we can probably just um, find that out because apparently we didn't come prepared and um, put that on the screen so that you guys can have those resources to use if you need to or to send to a friend or family member or whoever needs it. That's important. There's also text lines mm -hmm. where you can just, uh, if you don't feel comfortable or like calm enough or whatever to call someone, um, then you can just text with someone. You just text a number and um, there will be a real person there to talk to you about your problems and pretty much just be mm -hmm. like, have yeah. a little therapy session with you. You also in your don't moment. have to use these hotlines when you're on the verge of committing yeah. suicide. It doesn't mean I have to be like, oh, I'm going to kill myself right now. I need to call a hotline. It can also just be like, I've had these thoughts at one yeah. point or another, and I would like to discuss them so I can know whether or not I need to mm -hmm. be seriously worried or what, what's going yeah. on with me. It doesn't have to be a, yeah. I want to do it right in this very moment. Mm -hmm. Which is some people don't really get. They think of yeah. the oh, suicide hotline is only for people who are about to do it, mm -hmm. but it's not. You can, there are places you can go if you're not about to do it, but you mm -hmm. also just have, you have thought about it. Yeah. So if you're considering texting or calling a hotline, don't hesitate because if you're thinking about it, chances are you could use it, and they're not going to be mad at you for texting or calling if you're not totally sure. Like if you just call and talk about that. Um, like you've had thoughts before or you're struggling with the idea of it, you don't have to be on the verge, as you said. Um, 
but they won't mind. They won't get mad at you if you call. So it's literally their job to answer the calls. Yeah, they exactly. won't get mad at you. Yeah, so it's um, like don't be worried about calling or afraid about it. Um, I think there's a lot of like, yeah. Now we're going to wrap this up. Yes. This right. will, we're going to do more episodes surrounding mental health that will be up at some point. <laughs> yeah, I think um, our June, it's May, right? Yep, it's May. Um, our June episode is going to be about another mental health related topic <coughs> and we're hoping to talk about issues such as self-harm and mental health days and possibly some other stuff uh, in the future. So stay tuned for that. Right. That'll be a little so series. This has been All Things LGBTQ+. Thank you. Youth, Youth edition. edition. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in June. Bye.